What's up guys, we are back with another Cosmic Legions Wave 1 review and we are taking a look at one of the Sphexians today. So there's two Sphexians in Wave 1. We're taking a look at the Sphexian Block Commander. So we've got our Space Bugs. Now this guy comes in, you know, standard style package for the line, but form fitted to, you know, the bug guys. So they do have their own unique shape because there is a little bit of a difference from figure to figure. Some are in smaller boxes, some are in bigger boxes. These guys are kind of in the, the middle-ish area. Now, uh, you've got them there in the window. You've got the sort of hologram look down there on the bottom, Cosmic Legion's logo. You've got his faction highlighted on one side, and then you've got a bio as well. You've also got the write-up for Havalkatar Book 1 on the other side, and then the back of the box uh, gives us our big cross cell with all the figures in this first wave. So let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package, our Spexian Block Commander. So this is one of two Spexians in this first wave, one of two Space Bugs. We're getting more in the, what, the third wave. So this is like the boss bug when it comes to our squads. If you want to make squads, you've got the commanders and then you've got the prison guards. So they have some similarities, but they also have distinct differences as well. This figure is pretty wild actually and i would i would go so far as to say that these are going to be some of the more exciting figures in this wave that you know the whole wave is exciting but space bugs is pretty gnarly not to mention the fact there is some really ingenious parts reusage and then the way they just sort of bolted stuff onto this guy to make him into something different because this figure is i mean overwhelmingly parts reuse from like the oleg thygar the deluxe version the havalkatar version but he's got new things attached to him. Obviously, we've got wings, we've got a bug head. Uh, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on with this figure. As far as articulation, you know, moving him around, he's a 1.0 figure, but he's also different because just by virtue of how he's put together and some of the stuff that he has attached to him. So we've got a head that can look up pretty good. He's got a neck that juts forward. It's a separate piece that sits forward this way. He can look down really, really nicely though, but this tilt side to side, is really nice. A lot of range there. Of course, you can swivel that head. Your arms are going to go out at the sides about this far. He does have a space backpack on, and it is actually a more robust space backpack than any others, uh, just by virtue of him being one of those Fexians. You've got swivel at the, at the shoulder. I will stress, when you're messing around with this guy, watch these little arms on the torso. They have been a slight frustration point for me just to actually mess around with this guy. You know, if you, if they fall out, you can obviously put them back in, but in terms of filming a review, they, they are getting in my way. We've got our single jointed rotating elbow. You got swivel at the gauntlet, swivel at the wrist, and then you've got hinges as well. Now these guys are fairly well articulated, these little arms here. So they swivel at the torso itself and there's a hinge and there's a good chance this thing's gonna come flying out, maybe not. You've got a hinge there. There is also hinge and rotation at what would be considered its elbow. And then this little claw at the end also swivels. So this little thing has multiple points of articulation. Again, though, you have to kind of watch it. Just be careful with it because they are really, really small. The pegs on those are tiny. So the chances of them popping out are relatively high. I mean, just put them back in. It's not the end of the world, but it is something to keep an eye out of. Legs go all the way out. Uh, at the hips there, and then they kick forward. You can swivel, and I also, of course, forgot that he has a waist articulation. Since he is basically just the Oleg Thygar deluxe figure, he really just has a swivel. There is nothing at the, at the diaphragm, so there's no diaphragm cut. He's a 1.0 body. But this particular torso and how it's put together, there really isn't a lot of clearance there, so you're really only going to get a swivel out of it. We've got single-jointed knees that go... Uh, not 90, but they're decent. You've got twist there also. In typical Legion's fashion at the ankles, you do have a rotation at the top of the ankle. We've got our rocker, and then you've also got hinges down here too. So like pretty good range like on all these normal body parts, and then you have extra stuff when it comes to the little baby arms there. But of course he has wings. And for the sake of the review, I mean, based on what this guy is, he's a bug guy. So the wings are integral to this figure Unless, of course, you don't want him to have them, which is up to you. The Spexian Miner doesn't have wings, you know, that we're going to get later on. So it is, a, it is a feasible thing to display them without wings. These guys just peg into the back. They swivel out. And then they also hinge. Now, 
what I expected, and I, I don't know, I guess I forgot or just didn't realize it, they do not separate. So this is a, a multi-layered wing, but this does not move. Like this little one here is not gonna come down. If you try to move that, you are gonna snap that wing. So watch that, they are somewhat brittle, but like once they're in, they seem to be in. I haven't had any issues with them drooping or anything like that so far. You know, time will tell on that for sure. The peg is relatively small, so I did need some heat to get those in the back. But once I got them in that first time, they have not come out, uh, and I haven't taken them out either. So, overwhelmingly, this guy is familiar territory. He has some really nice range at the neck, at the head. Arms, legs are basically normal. And then, of course, you do have some extra stuff with this guy when it comes to wings and our little baby bug arms there. Now, I think it goes without saying that the major focus for this figure and the other Spexian is just what they are, the look and the idea, and then ultimately the execution, because I am so, so happy with how these turned out. And I, I mean, I say that in the best way possible, but at the same time, it's a big problem because I want so many of these. These guys are gonna be a little bit more difficult to display in mass because they do take up a lot more real estate, but I'll be damned if I don't want a squad of these. They look so, so good. A lot of that does come down to the fact of the paint, the colors, and just what they've done to make these guys sort of like light up is, is maybe the best way to describe them. The paint on these figures is like iridescent in terms of how it works, which again is a very insectoid thing based on certain, you know, real world bugs that have very iridescent colors that do change in the light. The block commander is maybe not as overt as the the guard, but he still has the same thing going on. So he's got this sort of like reddish orange hue for his armor, but the, when the light hits it, it picks up all of the shine, the sparkle, the metallic inside that paint, and it changes from like an orangey red to a yellow gold almost. And I don't know if I can adequately showcase, the, showcase this on camera, but it, it's, it's happening in, in real time right in front of me. And I, I can't stress enough just how cool it is to sort of just move this guy around and you can watch these colors blend and change. And like I said, he is overwhelmingly parts reuse, you know, most of him in any way, the, the torso and the arms and the legs. It's all stuff that we've seen on the Oleg Thigar Deluxe figure, but changing up the colors, adding the sheen to it just elevates this to something different. He does, of course, have a lot of unique parts. I mean, we've got bug parts, we've got the little arms, we've got other little arms that are inside the chest that are popping out of where like the emblem is on some of the other figures. He's got a different crotch piece because the the bugs do seem to have a really, really wide stance. And I'm assuming that's to help accommodate their their stinger, their tail, or whatever it is, the, the thorax. Is that the part on the back? Uh, and it's giving them, you know, kind of a, a wide-legged stance, and they get this much larger cod piece as a result. But this thing absolutely shines really, really well based on that iridescent type of paint. There's this sort of pinkish purple inlay color on the, like the new dots for these basically. And then this guy does have, you know, the space backpack, but it's different from what we've seen with the, like say the Sentry or, well, Thigar or of course the Science Officer. It's that same kind of apparatus, but it has an extra piece on it too. So it is one whole unit and it does come off. You can take the whole thing off and you can have just this bug body without the big carapace on it but it is a much larger, uh, more bulky piece of armor that sits over top and it actually does hide that neck piece that I'd mentioned earlier. And the neck piece is actually pretty weird. It kind of looks like a wasp's nest almost in terms of how it's uh, structured and, and how it's painted. But everything about this guy just sort of looks menacing and sort of nasty. And I know we, we've learned in the bios that not all of these guys are like warriors and evil, but these guys in this wave absolutely do kind of give that look. I really like this stinger back here. This is a separate piece. Obviously, it's a separate piece. It just connects in with like a ball peg, but it's like a really short ball peg, so it doesn't exactly move. It's it's just there, but there's a ton of detail on it, and it also kind of breaks him up a little bit, as does this row of spines that runs down his back. Of course, the wings are also back here, and like I said, they only do so much when it comes to moving them around, but they do look really good. There's tons of little detail on them. Every inch of them has this sort of, uh, I don't know, it's like a modeled look almost. There is little pivots and dents all in all of it, so it kind of muddles the light a little bit, and it kind of like gives like a stained glass effect almost. It's not exactly a multicolored thing, but it does look really cool, and then there's all these like sort of veins and striations in there. They are big, 
also, but they're not huge. Like the first thing I, th I, I thought when I got these out, I'm like, oh, this is going to be like a NECA gargoyle situation where they don't really allow for much play. And that's absolutely not the case because while they do move, they aren't super huge where they're so prohibitively large that I can't display a few of them next to each other. Uh, I do think maybe <laughs> when you get a lot of them, they're going to be hard to display together, but a handful is going to look really awesome on a shelf. And then this particular figure, the block commander does include a unique head for, for now. This is the unhelmeted head. The, the guard has the helmeted head. So this is actually showing us what these guys look like under the mask. You've got these huge mandibles that stick out. And the name of the game on these heads is some assembly required. Well, the figure in general, you've got to put the wings on, the baby arms. You've got to put the antenna and the mandibles on. If you don't, you're going to have these big holes throughout the head. But this guy looks rad. I'm really happy with the way these turned out. They've, he's got a slight expression. Like, he looks a little curmudgeonly. He's not overtly angry, but there's definitely some... Some intensity to this expression, a slight furrow in that brow is what I'm kind of picking up. I really like those blue eyes. They're definitely a little bit different. They stand out amongst the brown and the green on the head. But the mandibles, the antenna, they add some bulk, they add some height, and they add a lot of color, the mandibles in particular, to that face rather than just being a bunch of brown. So this guy looks awesome. I've kind of rambled on in terms of how much I truly like the way these figures look. But once you get one of these in hand, you're really going to understand what I'm talking about. There is so, so much to just sort of pour over with this figure. Tons and tons of detail in the base sculpt in general, but then you have all this other extra stuff that other figures don't have, in addition to probably some of the most wild paint applications we have seen thus far. And for our size comparisons, let's do other legions to start with. So we've got, we've got Atlas over here on the left from Mythic Legions, a 1.0 style figure, and we've got Oleg Thygar, the Grave Ring version over here on the right, for a 1.0 cosmic comparison. Let's do some other lines, of course. Let's pop this guy out, and we'll bring in the Masterverse Faker. And then let's take Atlas aside, and here is the Superhero Piccolo from Figuarts. Let's pull Faker aside. Let's do a Super 7 figure. Here is Mumra from Thundercats. And let's take Piccolo aside, and let's do a NECA Turtle. There's Leo, Toon Leo. And then let's pull Mumra aside. Let's do one more. Let's do a Marvel Legends figure. Here is a female. There is the recent X-Suit Psylocke. So this guy, I mean, he's 1.0 figure. You kind of know what to expect when it comes to sizing and how he's going to match up. There is some added bulk because of the wings and the antenna and the mandibles, but still at its core, this thing is your normal 1.0 size Legion's figure. Now, as far as accessories goes, our block commander and the prison guard have a pretty solid spread of accessories. They have the same stuff. It's just color palette changes between the two. And the name of the game for the deluxe style figures is Hands. You get a lot. So this guy comes with the style posy hands on him in the box. You get eight additional hands, four sets. Two sets are trigger finger hands, vertical and lateral hinges. And then the other two sets, so that's four again, is just standard gripping hands, vertical and lateral hinges. So you have them, you know, for any possibilities since you'll need regular hands and trigger finger hands for different types of weapons. And then of course, hinge styles do affect posability. We do get the actual weapons that correspond to those kind of hands, though. Uh, so you get the staff for the regular gripping hands. And this is a unique colorway for this guy. So you've got a sort of a bronzy gold handle. And then you've got gold inlay on the inside and these sort of uh, trapezoidal looking blades. This thing looks kind of like an energy weapon to me in some form because of like this coil in the middle. Kind of like the same thing I'm expecting to see, you know, when it comes to Kragnar's weapon. That it's not just some sort of melee weapon. There's something a little spacey about it. But I do really like this. It's also got some size. It's taller than our figure. We get some of the little wrist blasters. So these are the ones that go on the ports because this figure does, of course, have the ports. So you can pop these in and he can go blasting. So he's got some, some, some guns that you can attach to the body itself. These are uniquely colored to this guy as well. The prison guards are just gray or black, I believe. And then you also get what I believe is like the actual like signature Spexian weapon here because this very much looks like it goes with them. It looks insectoid. It looks organic in some ways. So the block commander does get a sort of like maroon color for this one with some red like indicators, like energy indicators maybe. You know, this is obviously some sort of energy weapon. The prison guards is like a bone color. So if you want to swap those out, you do have a way to, you know, change up what the guns look like as well as the staff when it comes to colorways. So this guy is pretty solidly equipped with accessories, a lot of hands, and then three, three, four technically, because you get two of these uh, different weapons. The only thing I wish we would have gotten with this guy, and I'm, I'm assuming it comes down to cost, 
is that I wish we would have gotten the alternate heads for each figure. This guy only has the unhelmeted head, and while I do really like it, I really like that armored head, and there's just no chance I'm going to be able to paint match that that head to this color. Uh, this paint scheme is too wild, and I'm not a painter, so it wouldn't be something that I could really do, and the blue head doesn't look right on this anyway. So I would have liked to have seen that. Not the end of the world, but what he does come with is pretty solid overall. So yeah, overall, this is a pretty solid figure. You know, there's there's some gripes. I'm not 100% happy with everything here. The little mini arms I find to be kind of frustrating, and the wings did take some effort to actually get in. But once it's all put together, the finished result is pr pretty awesome. The head in particular, the antenna, the big mandibles just looks awesome. The ability for them to have reused a lot of these parts and add stuff onto it, change up the, the crotch piece, change up that big backpack, add the wings, all the attachments for the space bug parts, really transforms an existing figure, because again, this is mostly Oleg Thygar, into something entirely different. Not to mention the fact that paint on this thing is absolutely wild. The crazy iridescent look that it has is awesome, and the bug parts look great, and he has some pretty solid accessories, and a whole bunch of hands to boot. So that's going to do it for this look at the Cosmic Legion's Sphexian Block Commander. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.